Hello, how's it going? So this is sort of my temple OS project, if you will. It's my labor of love. I can't imagine it'll, it'll ever get used for anything special, but it's special to me. So Godot is nice, but it has some limitations. First of all, it's not data oriented. It doesn't have an ECS, an entity component system. Secondly, although the Godot documentation is excellent it's probably amongst the best the 3d portion of the engine is a little lacking in documentation or I, I don't know personal opinion it's actually pretty good but long story short i just felt like making my own thing so this is unveiling da 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 the art et metier bonjour monsieur engine um, art and science it's a uh, it's free and open source, runs on Python, just for the lols. It is data oriented, it has its its own ECS architecture and everything. And yeah, I mean, if I run it, there's, it's not super exciting. This is the same demo scene that if you've been watching my channel, you've seen this a bunch of times. I guess what is exciting is the way these updates are happening. So currently we have about 200 cubes. They're all updating. If you're not familiar with this sort of stuff, the way I'm achieving that update rate is by compiling the update functions. So there's a number just in time compiler. It speeds everything up. But if I need even more performance, like let's say 200, what if I want 2048 cubes? How am I gonna get good performance on that or well, let's does my engine handle it let's have a look and as a matter of fact it does handle it that's 2048 cubes they're all updating in real time and my engine's handling it just fine in python now i'm cheating a little bit because it's not actually in python what this engine does is when the number of objects reaches a certain amount, instead of updating on the CPU, it updates on a compute shader. That's it. That's the trick. I'm also using compute shaders. So what I thought would be really cool would be to make a simple game engine, which is geared towards like nice, you know, little retro arcade style games, but it also has compute shaders running under the hood to, um, to really juice them up. And if you're curious, because I looked into this, there has to be a point at which running a compute shader for a small number of objects is wasteful. So I ran this a bunch of times, bring this over, and here are the results. So in blue, we have the GPR CPU, sorry. That's those compiled functions. On the Y axis, we have the frame rate, and on the X axis, we have the number of cubes. So you can see that if a small number of cubes, the CPU is doing a better job than the GPU on the surface. I mean, it's still incredible performance from the GPU, given that we have a work group size of 64 and 63 of those threads are being wasted. Like it's still doing an incredible job. Fundamentally, they have the same growth curve because we're still dealing with the fundamental problem. If you double the number of cubes, there isn't really a way to get around that. You can have more threads, but you're still doubling the number of cubes. But I identified that at about 1,024, no, 512. At about 512, that's the cutoff point at which the GPU really starts to outshine the CPU. Now, just in case you're interested, the limitation that I ran into, really, was on the Python side. So if I go and make 64,000 cubes, this will have a horrible start basically because i'm going through a vanilla python loop to construct those things and i am using a doubling strategy on the underlying buffers but it still has to go through a vanilla python loop 64,000 times like that's that's rough for anything but there we go that's 64,000 cubes that didn't take too long to load it took ages to load we're running at 378 frames per second and everything is updating. And this is being done 
on the GPU, data-oriented design, there you go. Just if you're interested, I thought this was sort of cool. These are being generated with a uniform distribution. So here we have a cube of cubes. I don't know, I just thought that was funny. I just thought that was cool. Sort of weird, but yeah, 380 frames per second, 64,000 cubes, updating on the GPU, art et metier. So, as I said, this whole thing is free and open source, and it's available online, but I sort of, sort of did a bit of a funky thing here, and that is, I wasn't that interested in spending the time to set up a proper DNS server, so, or DNS, so, um, Here's how we're going to do it. This is sort of hipster style, okay? This is sort of a niche thing. Not a lot of people know this. Um, if you go to your browser and type in the following IP address, 143.42.39.115, okay? 143.42.39.115. That is the website. I'm not going to bring it up now. It's sort of a surprise. Now, I want you to know this web design is intentional. Okay, because the web pages that I that I appreciated over the years were um, Lazy Foo is a good website and uh, Low Dev, Low Vanderveen, and this, in my opinion, is probably the pinnacle of web design. So just bear that in mind. Okay, now I'm just I'm joking around. I'm I'm being silly, but um, yeah, I mean that's I guess that's all I was gonna say. So. Over the coming days and weeks, I will be writing more tutorials and examples for this framework. I'll be sort of checking out the edge cases, rounding off the bugs and all of that. Still in a pre-release state, but I mean, that, that's my announcement. I hope you're excited. I'm super psyched. It's fun to have a little project and yeah, have a good one. I'll see you again soon. All right. Bye.